guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios, and right now I'm going to show you how to turn all these pieces of foam into this little guy right here, or at least his head, and then he'll evolve into this guy right here that you can walk and float to the nearest hydrant. Right. Let's get it. All right, so we're going to start with the top of the head first. So this is the top of your head. These are your patterns, right? So uh left and right or left and right whichever side is cleanest but it really depends on if you guys get white foam to start with because the colors do come random you're going to end up plasti dipping and painting this anyways so it really doesn't matter uh so you're going to leave the top as is but before we start uh heating and painting this we're going to cut the lip so this bottom piece here and here at an angle and we're also going to do the same thing for the inner part of the lower jaw which is this part right here and this part right here and we're going to do the same for here and here and here and here and i will show you what i mean you can do this within uh with an exacto blade or you can do this with uh, some machinery if you have some or you can even dremel this uh, if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a ruler. Uh, you can also freestyle this if you want to, um, just to show you guys what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to place my blade at an angle and I'm going to try and maintain that angle as I cut right up against the edge. So consistently maintaining my angle Cutting where the X meets the Y axis. So the surface, where the surface meets the side, basically at that consistent angle. And when I take this off, you will notice that now I have a bevel on the inside, right? And you're going to do that for the parts that I mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the process and catch you guys at the next step. All right, so as you can see, all of my parts have this slight beveled edge to them. Okay, so instead of being straight, you can kind of see the, let me kind of uh, bring up the brightness there, all right? See the beveled edge? All right, so you want that on the uh, top jaw piece, bottom jaw piece. Mind you, these two pieces are optional. This is gonna be to seal the mouth uh, when we're done. So I'll mention it again once we get to that point. So now what we're gonna do is grab a sanding stick. You can find uh, the link for the tutorial in this in the description. Uh, you're going to, and you can do this by hand with sandpaper also, but you're gonna sand the laser cut edges. Right? But what you're going for is when you rub your finger on the edge of the laser cut pieces, you'll notice that it's rough. All you're really trying to do is just getting rid of that burn and getting the foam back to the, the softness that it has there. So, right, so you can see how it's rough and burnt. And here I've already sanded down, so it's uh, the color of the foam that's on top, right? Not the edge. All right, so you're gonna do that for all of the pieces that will connect, which means this piece here, as well as the bottom jaw piece, which is here and here. These, we don't need to worry about them because we already cut the edges, okay? And you're also gonna sand the inside of these areas here and here, as well as this slit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process. So just to reiterate, we're trying to go from this to this, right? Uh, again, you might not get the white foam, you might get a different color foam, but this texture will be similar. It'll look darker than what the surface color of the foam is, and you want your edge to be the same color as the surface color. That's literally all we're doing. Um, you can technically glue these without having to go through that process. So if you're having a really hard time or don't feel confident with it, 
you can still try to. It is just gonna create a much better uh, adhesion with the edges um, just sanded uh, a little bit. All right, what we're gonna do now is heat our pieces. Heat up your foam. We heat it up on both sides. And then after you heat it, I'm basically going to round it out a little bit. No, I really don't need this. Um, so you can use your fingers and you're going to round out these shapes a little bit. So what we're trying to do is kind of recreate the three dimensionality of um, the profile of the face of zero. So if we're rolling the foam onto itself, kind of like going down the middle, right? You're squeezing down the middle and you're just recreating that three dimensionality to the character. So I'm going to go right here and the eyes kind of bulge that back so I'm pushing with my fingers behind here as I'm pulling apart the foam so finger in the back is pushing fingers at the top are pulling so we're bringing that three-dimensional shape back into the piece right now all right so we're gonna do that for basically all uh, four pieces so the two you can kind of see we're starting to see uh, a little bit of the dimensionality and how this is gonna come together so uh, we're gonna do this for left and right top jaw and left and right bottom jaw I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the rest of the process and catch you guys for the gluing aspect of it. All right, so just to show you guys the difference between a finished piece and an unfinished piece, okay? You see the amount of curve that this was giving, right? Compared to the flat piece that we have here. That's kind of what you want on all of the pieces you want like a decent amount of curve as if you're recreating a three-dimensional shape all right so i'm going to keep going all right so next up we're going to grab some contact cement it could be uh, barge or well wood whichever brand you prefer don't suggest doing this with hot glue because you do want these things to be as seamless as possible so i'll spread some on Make sure it gets to the edge using the back of my X-Acto blade to just kind of spread it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna let this dry. If you're familiar with how to use contact cement, you know the drill. Let it dry for a little bit and then glue it in place. So dry enough now that I can show you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and push. And I'm just trying to get the edges to stay as flush on the surface as possible. And just kind of seal everything back up. So that's basically what we're doing for all the other pieces. Fast forwarding and next step. All right, so with everything that has a little barge on it, you're always gonna start with the uh, the front, the tip. So I'm gonna start right here. Try to make sure that my edges lined up as best as possible. Uh, what I like to do with a fresh glue like that, I like to invert, invert the, uh, the seams a little bit and then glue them on the inner side just as well. And you'll see it because you'll notice like a gap so just kind of push push close those gaps by reversing the foam a little bit and then once that's said and done bring it back to its original shape and if you notice that there is uh, there are any pieces that just won't quite stick to each other you, you can always just grab some tape oh, I took a little too much on that so for example this back piece right here is not really doing a good job at staying with its counterparts. Just kind of pinch them together and then leave the tape there so that it holds it a little bit while the, uh, the barge cures a little longer. As you can see, we're starting to take shape a little bit. This is like our lower jaw. And we're gonna do the same thing for the top piece. Again, we're gonna start from the front. This one's uh, a bit more complicated so I'm not going to fast forward through this process I'm just gonna walk you through it 
gonna go ahead and start putting the pieces together. So, this way, if you guys can see it, I'm putting my surface seams li seam lines together first, and then I'm just kind of adjusting them on the inside. Notice how I have the two head pieces right here so that they're not uh, touching each other yet with the glue. And then once I get here, I'll reverse it and I'll attach at the seam and continue towards the back. Right there. Right there. I might be missing a little bit of glue here, so I can go back to that in a little bit. So here, I'm gonna re reverse and continue the gluing process in the front here. All right, so we got the top jaw and we have the bottom jaw. And as you can see, our little friend is starting to take shape over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add barge to the inside here and to the inside of our beveled edges. I'm gonna glue this together. The only other thing we're gonna do is just kind of bevel this edge down. Basically just tapering it ever so slightly. All right. So we've basically gone from this to something like this, right? You can see it's tapered. It's not as thick as it was before, all right? So we're going to do the same thing on this piece a little bit, not as much. Again, you can see the difference. We went from super thick to slightly tapered. So we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom jaw piece, uh, both of them, and we're gonna glue them just like we did all the other pieces. So. And also with these parts, all right, these uh, inner parts that we're about to glue right now, you do want to curve them uh, per where they belong. So obviously this bottom jaw curves like that. You wanna curve your piece that same way so that the angles face the inside of the mouth like that. All right, so same thing here. This curves like that. My angles are this way. I'm gonna curve this piece that way. So I'm gonna curve this in like this so that it attaches properly to the inside once I put it on, all right? So before I start closing the top jaw, up. Grab your lights that came with your deluxe DIY kit. Go. Then you're going to undo it. Here's our lights. You guys can grab some tape right here. Gonna hopefully hold that in place. Piece of tape here also right in between the eyes. Just uh, hold it in place where we want it to be. Okay, and now we start gluing. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the process and catch you guys at the next step. All right, so just to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown, start at the tip, all right, when you're about a quarter of the way through, bring the foam to where it's going to end and then start the other way around, like so. And then just fill in the missing areas. That way uh, you end up with enough foam on either side so that you're not pushing and pulling too, too much. All right, so the first half is a lot easier to do than the second one because and the first one, you don't have anything pulling. So now when you're doing this one, you're gonna, just gonna have to be more careful and a little bit more intent on getting the foam to stick because you're putting pressure now to get the pieces where they need to be. Okay, so once you get past that beginning stage, it kind of gets a little easier. And if the uh, lip ends up curling a little bit, that's fine, you'll be able to twist it into position just Keep going, trying to keep your seams as clean as possible. In this stage again, oh, whoops, I'm almost a quarter of the way. So at this point, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna bring it back right at the edge here. Okay, I'm gonna be mindful of my seams. 
there, and then it's like a little bit in the back, a little bit in the front, a little bit in the back, a little bit in the front. Just making sure that everything lines up the way that it should. Alrighty. All right, and that is pretty much it. So now, uh, remember you should have sanded this area also. If you haven't, make sure you do that because now we're going to uh, glue these two pieces together. And just like that, our head is pretty much done. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the process of sanding down the seams. So this is the difference between a stone uh, head and a sanding drum head. I don't even know if I'm using the names properly, but I know that this is stone and this is like sandpaper. So you want to use the sandpaper first and then the stone after to kind of smooth everything out. All right. Check it out, nice and smooth. May not look it, you can kind of still see the seams, but they're pretty much gone at this point uh, from the sanding. This is the difference between not putting those pieces in and putting them in. Again, if you're supposed to, you don't have to. Uh, it could be as easy as you getting uh, something, a strip of something and hiding the lights down here if you don't feel like going through this step and then uh, securing the the pumpkin nose at the tip here. All right, guys, so now moving on to the ears, which also comes with your kit. You'll notice that there are angles here. Uh, I'm gonna try to illustrate this here. So you have this corner that goes to this corner. This corner corresponds to that corner. You can kind of tell where these angles are here and there. All right. Find those corners that we spoke about or you can trace them with the back of the the back of your blade find those cut them into the foam come about try to cut about halfway through the foam um, don't go any deeper than that because you don't want this to um, you don't want to cut it all the way through all right so once you have that it should look like this little caterpillary looking thing and now what you're going to do is uh, do a bevel cut right next to it and going into that middle cut. And I'll show you guys what that looks like once I do that. So you see how I have this kind of like angled cut. So now when I glue this like that, uh, the ear is going to keep that little general shape. Another important thing to keep in mind while you're making the ears, if you want the ear to bend you know, back, obviously do the cut uh, in the back. If you want it to bend forward, you want to do the cut in the front. Uh, I kind of messed up on this one and did all of my cuts in the back. Um, so this, for example, I want this to bend this way, not back here. Uh, so what I should have done is put my cut on the surface here one cut here on the surface and then the other two cuts back here. I can still fix this, so what I'm gonna do is keep the ear bent, I'm gonna fill this with hot glue and the hot glue is gonna prevent the ear from folding back any further. Um, but it would have been better had I done it on the surface and then on the back. So for this one, I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna do one cut on the surface and then two cuts on the back, All right? I'm gonna go ahead and fan this out for a little bit and catch you guys at the next step. And it's done. Literally didn't take that long actually. Uh, so we have our head, we have our ears. Now it's really up to you where you wanna put these ears. If you wanna put them back here, if you wanna put them up here, I'm not judging. Just kinda give it some personality and have fun with it. All right, so you guys can see 
It's at a slight little angle there, so that it sits nice and flush on top of the head once I glue it down, which is the next step. I ended up deciding to glue these right at the right where this seam ends here, so it kind of helps to hide it a little bit. That way it's one less thing that I have to try and fill. All right, so my zeros got ears. Look how floppy they are, okay? We should have received this piece also. And uh, at this point, if you can, you know, I don't know, grab an old t-shirt or maybe get some fabric out of Joann's or something like that, um, a red fabric, something to make the collar red, or you can plasti dip this and paint it red, up to you. Before I do that, actually, you should also a, you know, cut a bevel into the collar. That's super important, so it's gonna end up looking kind of like this. I don't know if you can see, but I have like a bevel. And what that does is it helps uh, sit the collar nicely on the curve of the back of the head. You can do this you know, as many times as you like. Um, just vary the angle of your cut, use the ruler to steady your hand and make sure that the cut is consistent. And so I ended up getting rid of another part and now you can see that this is a lot more pronounced. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the process of gluing this together and catch you guys at the next step. All right, so this is pretty much dried. So you'll notice that there's a, a lot of resistance when you get to this last piece, but I purposely left just a little bit of cloth so that it can kind of act as like a, a closing stitch. So the cloth goes over this general area and then locks it all down. Now obviously this will be the bottom of the collar so that you don't see it. But look, it comes out nice and smooth. And again, give yourself enough room that you can tuck this in here, okay? And then leave this beveled area exposed because you're gonna end up gluing this uh, to the back of the head here, all right? So I have what's called quick seal. I'm gonna use some of this. Grab a little bit, put it down on my seams. Put it down a little heavy, it's like a credit card or the back of a knife, or to kind of smooth out and take out the excess. Don't press too hard because you want to leave some behind. Once you've done that, you want to grab. Uh, some water and um, with your water you're gonna dip your finger and you're just going to kind of like blend blend it into the foam so that it doesn't leave too much of an edge so you repeat this process for everywhere where you have seams okay I'm gonna fast forward through this process and I'll catch you guys for the next step Sorry if I sound muffled, I got my respirator on. So basically I'm gonna coat this with plastic dip. I'm gonna do a couple of coats. And if I feel like it needs it, I'll end up uh, giving it a, um, a primer base and then spray paint it white the whole way. But I'm hoping that the plastic dip uh, is enough to just mask everything. That way the paint doesn't crack or anything like that. So uh, arm's length away from the prop. I tucked all of the electronics, all of the LEDs inside and away from any exposed areas so that I don't accidentally spray the LEDs. So I'm going to fast forward through this process and catch you guys at the next step. All right, so while our head is drying, I'm going to show you guys how to do the body. So as you can see, I just grabbed 
Uh, it could be any type of sheet. This happens to be a stretchy, kind of like shimmery fabric um, that I had lying around, so that's what I'm gonna use. Doing it about, uh, let's say, 25 inches across, and then lengthwise, I'm going about 28 inches. Okay, and I'm just going to basically fast forward through this, draw this out, and give you guys an idea of what this is going to look like. All right, pretty sure my lines are hard to see on video, but I just can give you a general outline here. And this is the tail, goes back up, hands, curves down, and I kind of leave a little bit of space for that to go into the neck. So I have uh, some, I believe this is 18 gauge wire. You can go higher or lower, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, don't get something that's too, too heavy or too, too hard or else you won't be able to bend it. So uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is undo my wire. Now, mind you, the DIY kit does not come with any of this. This is stuff that you guys can do uh, on your own by purchasing fabric because Everyone's sizing might be different, so it's you know it's not a headache that I wanted to deal with. So uh, you will find links in the description to where you can find the rest of everything that I use for this build. Yeah, more or less looking at the shape. This is pretty much all good to go. So I'm going to tape these ends together. So that I have the peace of mind that I can work on this without it moving too much. So, so I'll go back in and re-add re -add some lengths to the fabric, this time giving yourself uh, that extra allowance on the outside. I like about a half inch or so. Since the first time I did straight lines, this time I did dotted lines just so I can tell the difference of where I need to cut because it'll be a lot easier if we cut the fabric first. Make like a long-ish strip over under and I will go ahead and fold this onto itself so you, sh you should feel the hot glue slightly come to the outside on your fingers then you know it's bonded to both sides of the fabric and you just keep this process going um, the this will lift as you're going through it, so if you have a heavy object or maybe someone to help you, uh, that's ideal. Uh, again, just make sure that you are keeping uh, your distances the same as you're going through all of this, but that's basically the process. So I'm gonna fast forward and catch you guys at the next step. have our little body as you can tell nice and flowy and uh, what I've done here is I basically twisted the ends together and that's it folks this is our body so our head is back from the paint booth look at that huh smooth smooth all over all right so I'm gonna go ahead and place our collar it's gonna end up taking a kind of like ovalish shape uh, in order to fit to the back of the head properly. So don't mind that. Um, this was only plasti dipped. Uh, if you do paint, it might be a good idea to do this uh, with hot glue. You can also do it with hot glue. I'm gonna do it with the, uh, the barge. But at this point, the hot glue is not a, a bad idea either so I have my lines I know where I'm going I'm gonna put that right there that's gonna form our head okay so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys at the next step all right 
correct. That's our head so far with our collar attached. So now what I'm going to do is start working on the electronics. Remember we had tucked everything in here. I'm going to go ahead and pull all that out and, and from the front I'm going to pull the wire out. I'm going to feel a little resistance anytime to, you get to the single LEDs but that's perfectly fine. Bring it in through this hole in the back of the pumpkin here. Okay. that there's enough room for the nose to fit in here all right so while leaving this connected to the nose bring your finger as close to the pumpkin as possible and start wrapping the lights around your finger now don't wrap this too tight because you want to be able to uh, take it off when you're done but go ahead and wrap the entire string through your finger all right once that's done once that is done compress the lights and Try to just smash it all in there inside the pumpkin. Now this might help at this wrap, um, you know, a sharpie or a pencil or something like that, and make sure that you just bring everything in. That way, there's nothing sticking out. All right, our nose is still attached, and now we can go to our back where our light is, and ta-da! Light up pumpkin nose. All right, how cool is that? have our body we have our head now we need a leash <coughs> so this is some one inch wide <coughs> nylon webbing uh, you can get this at your local craft store i have mines at about 30 inches again my instructions are just guidelines you guys be as creative as you want with these kids so i'm going to give myself enough wire that it comes out of the leash also want to make it so that it's doubled up. Right there. Get back and cut out the excess. Okay. Uh, you can twist this if you'd like, or you can just attempt to glue it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and twist it. In order to twist it, I'm going to insert the loose ends other end I'm going to hold with my pliers and then if this works properly it should just break for me loosen the front a little bit because I want enough of, the, of this on either side that I can wrap it around the leftover of the neck here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and just hot glue the two pieces together. So I'm going to fast forward through that process and catch you guys at the next step. the way that I did it or the way that you ended up wanting to do it. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shape so it kind of looks like you're holding a walking your dog. All right. And then I'm going to grab the body. Now. And then remember how I left these two out like this. So I'm going to grab my pliers. So in here, there should be a little bit of excess, right, from the, the back of the head. So what I'm going to do is just poke a hole through here, all right, so right there, right down the middle, bring this in here and just kind of open that up. What I'm going to end up doing is making like a bit of a square cut out, so one cut, two cut, 
three cut four. And now I have a bit of a hole that this thing can go through. Before I do that, I keep losing my uh, on off switch here. Some sticky back Velcro. Right here. Put the corresponding piece right there at the edge of the collar. That way, super easy for me to access, right? and it doesn't shift, doesn't move around when I try to turn it on and off. All right, we're almost there. Uh, I'm gonna give this a little bit of shape, so I'm gonna bend the arms down, a little bit, and out, forward, so, and the body a little bit of wave, here. slight bend towards the tail. Kind of cool looking. Okay. Once all of this is done, this uh, black strip that comes with your piece, this is going to be Zero's eyes, or lack thereof. So we're going to slide that in, one side, and tuck that in. Take this out, we can slide a pencil or something in to just kind of bring it right up against the surface. And now the head is completely sealed, as you can see. Dark eyes. And as I was saying earlier, I want to show you guys this. So I have a almost like a 90 degree bend here. So I'm going to turn the head towards me. Stick that in there like that. And then twist my head. So now this 90 degree bend just kind of holds the head steady ears over my body we're good to go so that's pretty much it for the giveaway studios DIY kit for zero the ghost dog from nightmare before Christmas I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I hope it was useful if you purchased the kit from Etsy or bought the patterns from me I appreciate the support uh, if you're just watching it just so you can make your own I hope I was able to help also uh, in any case uh, that's been it for this one if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the appropriate section for the video. I try to get back to them as often as possible. And uh, until the next time, this is Cass from Giveaway Studios. Cheers. Catch you guys on the next one.